All right, we're recording. Okay, welcome everyone to the May 20th teaching and learning call. And I have just posted the link to the Etherpad again in the chat so people can sign in there. And do we have any other announcements besides the fact that Wilma has updated the videos? Thank you, Wilma. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, just another reminder about Open Aperio. Registration for the early bird is um, up until the 26th, I believe. So you have a few more days if you haven't registered. And the registration um, prices have dropped, so they're quite affordable. Um, there is financial assistance available should you uh, need it or if you know someone who's thinking about going we can't afford to go because they have no budget um, we do have some support available so I encourage you guys to register if you haven't and um, I think those are the only oh we have um, focus groups also running on Fridays and I'll, I will get the links for those and paste them into etherpad but we're running focus groups on um, the Sakai UI redesign that we're working on with a, um, a UX designer that we've brought in and we have a, a team that's kind of working on um, reimagining what we could do with navigation and such. So if you're interested in looking at some of the designs, we change them up every week. It's sort of iterative, whatever we're working on that week. Um, so I encourage you to uh, sign up. It's at 10 a.m. on Friday for the faculty one. And then we also have one this Friday at 11 for students. So I encourage you, if you have any students that are still around, um, to encourage them to sign up for that because we really, really, really want student input. So, um, and it's hard to, to kind of get them to sign up for these things. So if you know anybody you can nudge, any student workers that are still around, um, we'd be happy to have them. And I will place the links into Etherpad just as soon as I go get them. Oh, actually, somebody got them for me. Thank you, whoever did that. Charles, that maybe? Oh, Josh. Yep. OK, so yeah, the links to the Calendly sign up um, page are already in the Etherpad. So uh, again, if you're interested, it's um, on Friday 10 for the instructor one, 11 for the student one. That's Eastern time. And those are all my announcements. I don't know if anybody else has some. Well, a quick question. Mm -hmm. Do they have to be Sakai schools? No. OK. I have access for a lot more. I have access to a lot more students at non-Sakai schools than I do of Sakai Yeah, schools. Yeah, we <laughs> talked about that a little bit. And I think it would be valuable. Um, and okay. the rest of the committee thought so, too, any kind okay. of student input. Good. So one, one other announcement, um, if you haven't yet completed the survey on uh, potential use cases for a Microsoft Teams integration, please do. So there, there are about uh, 28 people from the community who have replied so far, and that's great. Um, we're gonna wrap it up this week and uh, figure out where to go from here. So if you use Microsoft Teams at your institution and you haven't completed the survey, now is a great time. Any other announcements? <clears throat> All right, in that case, we will move on to um, the main portion of today's call. Uh, we'd like to welcome Alistair Hendrick, ah, excuse me, Alistair Hendricks, um, who posted recently in the user list that he had um, an iPhone app for Sakai, and we thought it might be nice to have him come on and present. Um, he told me that he's formerly from the University of Cape Town, but has no current academic affiliation. But I guess he can tell us a little bit about himself um, when he starts up. Alistair, are you there? Hi, Charles. Yes. Uh, yeah, so I'd be keen to just generally discuss uh, the iPhone app that I have built, as well as uh, sort of the future of how I'd like um, sort of the iPhone app to evolve uh, for the Sakai community. So let me just get sharing. I've made you presenter, so you should be able to. I think there should be a little screen icon at the bottom. Ah, yes.
Great, there we go. Can everyone see that? Yes. Yes. Yep, you're good. Thanks. Great. Awesome. Uh, so I just wanted to, I decided to jump on this call to discuss uh, Sakai for iOS and some of the work that I've previously done, uh, as well as uh, some of the work that I've been doing. So just a bit of a background on me. Uh, I attended the University of Cape Town from uh, 2012 to mid-2015. I'm currently in a mobile engineer specializing in iOS, and I'm working for a fashion e-commerce company uh, in South Africa. This presentation might be deja vu for some of you. I actually did do a presentation to this uh, same group in 2017 about some of the previous apps that I built. Uh, a brief history of about some of the previous apps that I built. Uh, I released an iOS app in uh, September 2013 for the University of Cape Town, and that supported their Sakai instance called the Vula app. I then uh, released an iOS app with more uh, support for Sakai instances called Universe, and that replaced the, the Vula app in 2015. And uh, as I sort of moved out, I ended support for Universe in July 2018, hoping that someone would fill the gap. I saw some uh, promising stuff coming out of Rutgers from one of the students there, uh, and the hope was that a university or individual would build off the foundation that we had previously laid. To give you some context of how many uh, students were actually using the apps at uh, the University of Cape Town, uh, at our peak, we had about 23,000 students using the app, uh, and that was out of a, a registered uh, um, attendance of about 34,000 students at the university. Uh, this is what the, the Vula app in 2013 looked like. You had your uh, you had all your courses or sites on one hand. On the other side, you had your tools, and in the center, you were able to access that content. Later on, uh, with the Universe app, uh, I improved that a bit more, uh, moving to a tabbed approach. Uh, we had the same access to announcements, resources, and chat rooms, uh, but that provided uh, a, a lot, a much richer experience. And as I said, in 2018, I did uh, sort of sunset this application as there was another application on the market as well uh, and i felt that it was in safe hands but fast forwarding to 2020 uh, in january or february 2020 i was starting to look for a, uh, a open source contribution that i could make uh, to uh, to just generally the community and i found that there was still a need for a sakai ios app um, I realized that it required community buy-in su and support for it to succeed. Uh, and what I was really looking at is trying to, to provide a consistent and open experience and share the learnings that I had uh, from my previous attempts at apps uh, with others. So uh, I dusted off an old, uh, an old I Sakai iOS SDK that I had originally open sourced in 2018. Uh, and I put more work into into it in 2020. Uh, and that Sakai iOS SDK is now available um, on GitHub. Just to explain what the Sakai uh, iOS SDK does. Uh, what it does is it provides a starting point for a developer to build an application that uses Sakai. Uh, it provides the, help, the helper methods and documentations that a a developer would need to access tools like the announcements, resources, uh, assignments, and calendar. And if a resource is not available or tool is not available or not supported by the SDK yet, uh, it should provide a way to fall back to a mobile web experience. Uh, currently, the SDK isn't a drop-in solution to an existing application you have. Uh, it won't provide you with a UI or UX. It just provides you with the data um, and the, U, the UX experience is left up to the app integrating it. Now, once I had built this, I realized that it wasn't gonna be of any use unless you put an app in front of it. So I decided to eat my own dog food. Uh, the initial uh, focus was on the Sky SDK, but I needed to integrate um, needed to build an app to integrate the SDK into. So that's when I reached out on 
on the Sakai user and Sakai dev channels to find out if there was a need. Um, and I got some responses back from that. Uh, and that's when I decided to uh, build an app for the iPhone called Nance. It's quite a simple app. Uh, and what it does is it uh, has supported tools for announcements, resources, calendars, uh, assignments, and chat room. And for all the other tools that will fall back onto the mobile web, um, onto the mobile web view. Uh, this is available uh, for iPhone on the App Store. Uh, if you're keen to check it out, you can just search Sakai Nouns and you should be able to find it. You can probably tell by this point on my third app that naming apps is difficult. It is, in fact, difficult. Uh, to just show you some screenshots for those who don't have access to the app, uh, it has a, when you launch the app and you're logged in, uh, you're presented with your most recent announcements. Uh, you're then able to uh, navigate to your courses as well and uh, see all the tools within a course. Um, there is support for some uh, some of the some of the tools, so you would have support for your announcements and be able to see everything there. Plus the attachments on the announcements, you're able to get support for the resources. I added support as well for assignments. Tapping on an assignment would uh, launch the web view, uh, and then we I've also included native support for the chat room as well as the calendar. Just to touch on some learnings and improvements that I found from building a Sakai app. So the uh, Sakai instances differ a lot. Uh, something might not work at a university or college if you haven't tested against it. Uh, I did most of my testing against your, uh, the Sakai QA instances. So the uh, Sakai 19 QA instance and the Sakai 20 QA instance, seeing as I'm no longer a student. Um, the Sakai Direct API also provides a good foundation to build a mobile experience, but there are definitely improvements that need to be made. Uh, what I found is uh, that the announcement API uh, can sometimes, uh, on the direct uh, endpoint, can sometimes be inconsistent and the response time can sometimes be poor, but I'll get into that, but get into that a bit later. Um, there was also Sakai ses session management. So it can be a bit trickier in the mobile world. Uh, I'm used to a, uh, a RESTful uh, architecture or a uh, having a OAuth um, way of handling things, whereas uh, those that have dealt with session management on Sakai possibly know that uh, it is uh, session-based instead of a JWT or JOT-based system. I also realized that uh, educators are just as important as, as the students when offering the mobile experience. Uh, some of the, the best feedback that I received was from educators, uh, and I would like to uh, improve the app by uh, looking at publishing tools as well within the app. For those that, that are interested in testing the app uh, at your school or uh, at your university or college, there they are just two prerequisites. Uh, you need to be running Sakai 12 uh, or higher, I've tested uh, the SDK as well as the app on Sakai 12, 19, and 20, and then there needs to be access to the direct um, endpoint. You can either email me or you can fill out the, um, the form. Uh, what I will do is I will drop the link to the form within the chats uh, and add it in the notes so that you're able to get that. If you run into issues um, or you find broken features, I'm really happy to help out. Uh, bonus points if you have a staging or QA instance that you could give me login details to. I would then add that to the testing matrix um, on our um, continuous integration and delivery that I use for the open source project. And it will be tested against uh, within the, the Sakai iOS open source project. Uh, if you feel that you would not benefit uh, from the app uh, and your students wouldn't benefit from the app or the experience is poor, that needs refining, feel free to email me and I'll remove the instance as well. Uh, I really do want to provide a good experience to the students uh, because I think that they do deserve it. Uh, some upcoming fee improvements to the app. Uh, what we found is uh, that we need to update the design a little that highlights courses a bit more instead of announcements. As I said before, uh, announcements, uh, the announcements API can be a bit sluggish. So um, 
moving uh, to a design that highlights courses would definitely help in terms of just performance of the, the app and general, the UX of it. Um, I recently added iOS file support and I'll be adding offline support soon too uh, in an upcoming release. Something that's also uh, quite relevant at this point in time is that lots of people are using, uh, preferring to use iPads over iPhones if they have both uh, because they usually are at home currently. So, uh, once we have done the updated design, there will be iPad support. Um, I'm also investigating uh, better PDF and annotation support for resources. Uh, I'm leaning off some of uh, what Canvas and Instructor are using within their apps to look at how we could, uh, how we could make that better uh, within Nouns. I'm also gonna be looking at uh, educator use cases and generally also some roadmap planning. Um, my vision for this is that roadmaps can be uh, transparent and public. So I'll likely either look at a JIRA board or uh, a, a public Trello board where you can see roadmaps um, and see what I'm working on currently. Just to tie everything together and, um, and just tell you how Nounce fits in. Nounce is just a UI over the Sakai iOS SDK. While the app is currently uh, closed source, uh, I'll be continually updating the SDK with new features as Nounce gets them. Uh, some, of the, uh, some of the Nounce UI might make it into the Sakai iOS SDK. The long-term goal is to allow the SDK to be something that is a drop-in solution for your uni existing university app. So if you do have a university app, uh, and you would like to add support and make that app an all-in-one solution, ideally I'd like the open source Sakai iOS SDK to be that. A question that I get a lot um, is about the usage and costs. And what I've realized is in order for this to work, the app should be free. Um, I've, I've seen that from my previous two, uh, two iterations of the app. Uh, it's just not a level playing field if you're always talking about uh, pricing or costing. Uh, I would like this to be driven and be free for the students and at the core, the core app to be free for the universities as well. Uh, that said, there are costs associated with building the application in the long run. Um, generally, there, there are likely opportunities for university, universities um, and the community to sponsor the project which would allow uh, more development of both the app and SDK. I'm happy to hear feedback on ideas and how we can achieve this. Uh, and then just to get into how the Sakai community con can contribute, because I think that that's an important part of getting this app out to students and making it an app that the students can use. Uh, I'd really appreciate any feedback uh, that, that the, the community can provide uh, on either things that aren't working or feature, feature suggestions, uh, opening up a line of communication with Sakai developers uh, to improve some of the endpoints that we use um, and discuss uh, how we can make improvements to make uh, Sakai a bit more mobile friendly or mobile API friendly. Uh, volunteering um, UI design and UX help so looking at uh, are there ways that we can, uh, as a community, try make uh, the app better through crowdsourcing UI designs. Um, and then you can also sponsor the project on, uh, on GitHub. So the Sakai iOS project is open source and available on GitHub. And by sponsoring it, you allow me to spend more time working on the project. Um, and yeah, that's generally everything that I have to say about the Sakai iOS uh, app at this point in time. So thank you guys for your time. I'm happy to take any questions if you do have, and I will drop some of the links uh, in, the, in the chat. A quick demo. Uh, yes, I can actually possibly do a quick demo. Um, sorry, I'm just catching up on the chat quickly. Yeah, some people have used it, I haven't. I'm just a, 
a short demo would be great if it's not convenient. Um, sure. Uh, one moment. Let me just. Good. I can organize a quick demo for you quickly. That would be great. We've got the time. So, Alistair, well, uh, while you're organizing a demo, I'm going to start saying some words, okay? Sure. So, uh, let me first say, as the owner of Learning Experiences, uh, you should not want for money. Um, you should not want for money. I contacted you a while back and uh, said, do you need money? And I thought you told me you didn't. Um, and I'm like, okay, uh, I stand ready, willing, and able to throw money at this. To what, what, it, I don't want you to ever say to yourself, crap, that was $500 I wish I could have spent, right? And that you're, you know, you're just, you know, and so, so there are many things that come to mind right away. You mentioned the costs, but I was thinking we, we should probably make you a commercial affiliate, and that has a cost. But again, you're just like a dude doing this on the nights and weekends, right? And, and so there's a cost to commercial affiliate, we, but I want you to be a commercial affiliate, and I'm happy to subsidize or completely pay the cost of you becoming a commercial affiliate, or perhaps discount it and then I pay for it. Um, any of your regular costs, I am happy to pay for. I One of the things that I've liked doing lately is if you knew a student that could help you a lot and you could pay that student, given that I bet you still have lots of great connections at UCT. Um, and, and so uh, the Sakai community really, I think, would like this to be in us, right? And I would, I would like to come up with a way to give you the funds that you just do this rather than you do this with an eye to raising money. And you, you said it very, very articulately that if you're spending all your time chasing around $5 things, you're kind of foolish. And so I, if, if I were starting your company, what I would do is try to come up with a way that a philanthropist like myself would be able to make most of the things free and ensure that the base stuff was happening and that you felt like you weren't completely wasting your investment. And then you could make money when any university wanted to make a custom app. Because honestly, you know, if a university wants to make a custom app, they're not going to hire an iOS developer. They're going to want you to do that, right? And you charge them, yeah. you know, 100 bucks an hour for that, and then you make them a custom app. And the way you get that business to make the custom app is that you just give everything away for free, right? And then they're like, dang, but I wish there was a Rutgers logo on it. And then you go like, well, that's not that hard to do, and I'll take care of it. I'll keep it maintained, and you will pay me this much per year, and it'll work. And and I'm not saying that you're supposed to eventually support yourself with that money, but but at the same time, I don't think it's appropriate for a school to say, I want you to do a bunch of custom work that I, that's just free because I want it to be free, right? Um, I, you know, I think that that's fair. It's value that that school is going to get and it keeps you uh, whatever. But, um, and so, so that's the first thing. I'll, uh, and the second thing I want to talk about is adding uh, JWT support to, to, uh, to Slash Direct. And, and uh, I, I have some ideas on that, uh, things that might go really, really, really fast. Um, and uh, so, so we can talk about that, uh, how, to, how we could make it so that you could just talk to direct with JWT and not use session at all. So that, that's, that's something to talk about. And, uh, and I think it'd be good for you or to somebody to write up a simple document that says, or, and maybe a little video that basically says, so you want to play with nonce or nonce. Um, here is here's a QA server to talk to. Here is the steps. Here's the thing. So that like for me, I sadly work at a Canvas school, right? So I would use this and play with this, but it'd be nice to know where to play with it rather than putting out my own Sakai server just to play with it. You know, we all were playing with it on say QA two or whatever. Then we would all be together when we're playing with this thing, and so we would get 
we will get some commonality in our kind of experimental stuff. And I'll stop talking there in case you're ready to start a demo. Great. Uh, thanks, Chuck. That was, yeah, that was very insightful. And I definitely agree with you uh, on the, on looking at uh, commercial options and how to make that more viable. Uh, and I think maybe possibly we can just, we can have a chat offline and, and discuss more of that. But uh, yes, I'd be keen to chat more about the JWTs uh, as well. Um, just to show you a demo quickly. Um, I think that. This should be up. Uh, so if we launch the app, uh, we're able to load it up and we're able to see our um, we're able to see our all our announcements. So uh, just off this uh, to reiterate again that uh, that request can sometimes be a bit slow, uh, and that's why we're looking at somewhat tweaking the app a little bit. Uh, but once you're in, you're able to see all your uh, all your announcements. Uh, and I think I, I I don't think that I did mention, but you are able to uh, you are able to use this uh, off with the Sakai QA service if you select that as an instance. But I think that Chuck did raise a really good point uh, about uh, looking at seeing it, some documentation around it. If you go to your courses, you're able to see. Uh, what your courses are. So this is just some uh, some courses that I've loaded up on the Sakai QA uh, server. You go into your announcements, you're able to see a list of your announcements as well as tap into the announcements, as well as uh, your resources. So uh, if you do want to grab a resource, you can download it. And then once it's downloaded, you're able to open it up. So uh, as I uh, as I mentioned, I'm looking at uh, other ways uh, of annotating resources. I know that some students do download their resources and then they're keen to annotate them. And then uh, just to show you the chat room, uh, you're able to ask questions. You have a full native chat room uh, functionality. Uh, there definitely are other tools that I'd like to integrate. Uh, and yeah, I, I'd like to put more work into the app from a design point of view, as well as uh, from a feature perspective. Right now, I am generally just spending some time getting the uh, all the features that I currently have in a working and reliable state that works across other universities as well. Um, and then, let me just show you assignments while we're at it. So as I said previously, if you uh, if you are on the assignment screen, uh, if you do tap on an assignment, that assignment would take you into the web view uh, fallback. Uh, we do that because sometimes the um, sometimes the the direct APIs don't provide uh, all the information that we need. Uh, and that's something I'm also keen on on working on and contributing on. Uh, someone asked, uh, does the login page show the announcement or is it aggregates all the notifications? So it just shows the announcements um, that would come through from the announcement endpoints. If there are other notifications that are needed to be aware of, um, I'd, yeah, I'd be happy to integrate those. Um, and then just to carry on, say we have, calendar over here. I think that I have a previous a test that was set up. So you have what, what the event was as well as upcoming events. And then uh, if something isn't supported, it would fall back onto, uh, as I said, the mobile web view. So you'd see a stripped out version of the mobile web. Um, regarding an Android version, I haven't taken a look at building an Android version. For this, um, I do want to I want to take a look at that. Possibly from a technical perspective, that might um, that might become something like Flutter. But uh, yeah, it, it's there is still a need in the market for it. Uh, are the calendar events clickable? Can you see all details? Uh, you should be able to if 
I haven't implemented that, then that's a bug. Uh, let's just look. That is a bug. I did not do that. Uh, so yeah, I, I might need to implement uh, that or fix that bug. I think it is available. Um, and then if you go to your user uh, on this side, it's really at this point in time, as I said, very simple. Um, I bring up the um, three main items that are, use, that are user centric. Uh, so it's the announcements, all the users assignments and all their calendar, um, their calendar stuff. So yeah, that's a, just a quick overview of what's available. Um, gradebook. Gradebook at the moment is uh, the gradebook at the moment is still uh, the web view. Uh, I think that's why it's not in this demo, but in this demo um, user. But it is something that I'd like to um, work on. And then just to touch on a point around um, notifications and push notifications. So notifications in theory are possible. Uh, but they would need to be uh, pushed from a instance's server to a server that I'm running, and then they will flow to the app. So uh, for instance, uh, if a announcement was sent, uh, there would be need, need to be some sort of channel um, on Sakai that could say, hey, push this announcement with this site ID to um, this endpoint, and then I could take over from there and distribute it to possible users that are um, that are subscribed to that. Uh, another one that another thing that is possible, as you said, for the for um, grade changes and and the calendar is that there are ways to do that locally on the device. So yeah, it, that could be possible. But yeah, that's everything from me. Uh, I'd be happy to chat uh, within the chat room um, and share notes if possible. But yeah, thanks everyone for taking the time to listen to this. Uh, and if you do have any questions or any feedback, you're welcome to email me. Thank you for sharing. That was really good. Yep. Thank you, Alistair. Does anybody else have any questions for him? Oh, yeah. I've, I've, I've got a couple of questions. It's uh, Adrian. Adrian from Longside. Yeah. Um, yeah, I asked the Android question. <laughs> I'm just wondering whether you've looked at um, using something like Ionic to just write this and just make it a cross-platform type thing. Um, I haven't looked at Ionic in a while. Uh, generally, uh, I, from, from my experience um, and working with some, so I'm generally an iOS developer. I ha do have some experience with looking at Flutter, um, and that seems to be leading the way in terms of um, making a, a very rich native um, experience, but I'm definitely open to looking at cross platforms. I do realize that there's also a need uh, for an Android app. Uh, the general motivation as well for me to look at, uh, general motivation for me to look at it from a iOS perspective is that within South Africa, there is actually an Android app that that is used by students that's maintained by a friend of mine. Uh, it's not as, open source as as my app um, and it's very it's tailored to the instances ie uct that it supports uh, so that's why i uh that's why i approached it from an ios perspective but i'm more than happy to, to take a look at the the android side of things and see how we can make it across that form so yeah I've got, so my, my, next, my next question is um why why is nouns not open source so I generally just uh, couldn't really find the best way to um, the best way to open source that at this point in time. Uh, I'm not against open sourcing that, uh, but and I think that it would be something that uh, I'd explore in the future. 
uh, but I found that a good starting point was to open source the, the SDK, um, have the app closed source for now, and uh, just feed changes back into the SDK. Uh, so yeah, it's something that I'm, that I'm open to exploring um, and yeah, also looking at how we can make this, uh, make this work for everyone as well. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Cheers. That's it. That's, that's the end of my questions. Somebody, somebody else. <laughs> Thank you, Adrian. Anybody <laughs> else? So what's this what's the source of the uh the non open source block is it is it there's some somebody's intellectual property that's in it or uh is it like a dream of future commercial or whatever or is it just because like github sucks for ios projects um what's the what's the thing that's stopping it if you don't mind sharing yeah so generally uh it's it's twofold so it's uh how to best open source that, um, as you said, uh, iOS project. So how to best open source that um, in, a, in a safe way that doesn't really, yeah, just it protects things and makes things available, um, protects all, yeah. I, it, it's very difficult to, uh, to explain, so, so I think. Is it, sorry. so you're saying there's some simple technical reasons that make it difficult? Um, Generally, it's just around how to the, the CI and uh, around that. Uh, some uh, some applications like Kickstarter, Kickstarter open the I um, the open source the iOS app, but they still have uh, some magic and some of their CI that sits in a closed sourced way. So it was uh, that I wasn't really looking for that complexity at that at, at that point in time. The other uh, reason I didn't initially open source it was around the um, around I wasn't really sure what the uh, what it was going to look like from a commercialization point of view. So ideally, I would like it to uh, ideally I would like it to be something that is available uh, to the community uh, and that is built on by the community. But I'm just really not too sure what that looks like yet. I I think that it will eventually get into the open source uh, into the open source world once I figure out just this path, um, and then once that's happened, uh, yeah, we're able to build on it. And I think that it can also be driven by the community a bit more. Then. So it sounds like it's a combination of. It's a. It's kind of. There's some technical weirdness about open sourcing iOS apps that you got to kind of figure out. That actually, perhaps, makes it harder to maintain them once you've open sourced them because you really can't open source all of it, no matter how much you want. Is that because there's like magic secrets inside of them and stuff that you, you uh, can really just give to people? There's yeah. There's not a lot of magic in it. Uh, I mean, I, I don't have. Uh, I don't have a lot that's really sort of magic about it. Uh, but in the future, there are things like uh, you probably aware. Uh, I think that Canvas uses uh, the Canvas app uses things like um, a proprietary um, SDK for uh, for annotations within PDFs. Right. So some of those things that I'm exploring, I would like to um, look at exploring and possibly um, reaching out to those companies and seeing if I can embed it into the app. But then and you can't open source it. Yeah. You, can, you can't open source it. Yeah. Okay, so I, I get it. Yeah. Okay, and so and so you should. So in a way, whether it's open source or not, is if if the reason that it's not open source is because you've had to embed some intellectual property in it that makes it so it's not allowed to be open source. That's that's one reason. If it's not open source because of the potential future revenue, then that's something we should talk about, right? Um, you know, and, and, and the key thing there is, is, is the, the, the bet that people can make about, is this gonna stay free? And is it gonna stay there? And, and for you to keep working on this, you need us. You need some sustainable.
sorry, Chuck, I think I just lost you there. Um, yeah, I think we possibly did lose him. Yep, we did. Uh, At least his audio anyway. Yeah. I think uh, just to, to answer possibly some of some of it, uh, I do want the project to continue. Uh, and that's hopefully if I'd love to be involved in it. Um, but if I am not involved in it, I'd love to hand the baton to someone else. Um, but yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah, I think that's all the, if anyone else has any other questions for me, um, yeah, you're welcome to shoot them over via email or within the chat. Um, and yeah, I'll just drop a link to uh, providing interest and that's everything from me. Thanks everyone. Thanks again, Alistair. That was great. Okay, let's see. It's 9.47. Um, there was a JIRA that was, I think, requested by Matt and Sean that we might have a quick minute to take a look at if people are willing. Can people hear me? Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm happy to look at the Jira. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, are you willing to uh, talk about this one since you brought it up? Uh, I don't think this one's from me. I think I just commented yes. on it. Oh, okay. I assume that since you commented on it, you had something to do with it and it ended up in the agenda somehow. I'm not even sure what it is, to be honest. Um. I looked at it ahead of time. Uh, You're so good, Laura. It appears, it appears that we're being asked as the teaching and learning group to weigh in on the solution. Um, if you click on the link and scroll down to the um, screen capture, uh, the screen capture shows the drop down list where you can choose how many items you want in announcements, or you know, you've seen this drop down everywhere else. The thing is, is that there is no setting to return to. The setting doesn't persist. It has to be changed every time someone comes in. Students sometimes forget. And, um, you've made 12 announcements and they only see 10. So um, how should this drop down persist to some setting? Does the instructor choose it for the course? Well, we don't do that anywhere else. Um, we have some settings that persist in gradebook for the instructor from session to session. So we have some places where we persist those. Um, I think one of the options for how to make this have a user set default value is to put it in each person's preferences page. I don't know if that's going to be seen a lot. Seems like it might be a little 
out of the way to have to go to preferences to set it there. But I, I mean, as a user, I would probably want it to remember my last selection. Yeah, me too. That would be the most, I think most people would expect it to behave that way. And that's what we did for instructors in the uh, grade book. The way they set their order and uh, what columns are visible and what columns aren't visible. Um, so Matt's note to your point, Wilma, was exactly that. Under assignments, there is an options tab which specifies, please choose the display option for the assignment grading page. It would seem to me as a user that I might go to options in order to set that preference. Now I realize that that's only for assignments, but it and doesn't cover announcements, but that's one bite at the apple. Well, I was thinking announcements did have an option. Where did uh, I get that? I was idea? thinking the same thing too. Let me check. Yes, it does. Oh, wait. I know there's some kind of display option in there. It has options, but it doesn't let you choose. Uh, it lets you choose number of days in the past. Oh, or number of announcements. But that's really for the display of the number of announcements. It doesn't specify the default viewing pagination. So it's number of current announcements, but it's not a display view? It's the display limit, right? I'm not sure I understand the distinction. I'm not either. It looks like you can choose the number of days in the past or the number of announcements. Under options. I think the option choice is where you uh, view the announcement, like on the overview page, like which ones show up there. But when you click on the announcement tool, that's where you get that list view. And I think the list view is where that drop down menu um, has you know, the selections there. So I think you might see announcements in the list view that wouldn't appear if they're like too old on the overview page, but you would be able to get back to them. Does that make sense? Yeah, that does make sense, Wilma. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm looking at uh, um, announcements both as a synoptic tool and from the left-hand nav bar, and they both have the same option setting. In fact, I don't see a drop-down in either place. I'm on Sakai 19, by the way. Is this uh, so? I think there's a few uh, things to consider in this one, and um, which is why my comments were asking for some clarification by a test plan. But I understand that it's a feature request so there isn't um, an ideal implementation yet um, so some of the things to consider here is do we need a better default value is 10 too low these days um, for some tools i'm sure 10 was originally set from performance perspective other things to think of is 
once you change this, should it always stay that for all pages or is that confusing? Or should you set it in the tool and then not have to worry about it in the preferences or do you set it in the preferences and that is reflected everywhere? And also there was a note in Matt's first comment talking about how he would like the instructor uh, to set it and that that changes the student's view of things. So that's the instructor controlling how the tool uh, appears to students. So there's a bunch of different considerations here and maybe they're separate requests, but they kind of seem to all go together. So I think we kind of have to figure out the best uh, use case and the best uh, user experience for all of these um, cases. If I've illustrated what Matt's original request is well. Yeah, I think this might require more discussion than we have time for at the moment. Yeah, we could take it up on the UX call. Which is I was right just going to suggest that. Well, uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we could do that. <clears throat> so, anybody who wants to participate in that discussion, here's an advertisement for the UX call, which is coming up in the next hour in Aperio Room Three. Thank you, Charles. Which is only yeah, three there. minutes away. So speaking of which, I think we probably ought to wrap up if we can. So those of us that are going to the UX call can make it almost on time. Um, the only thing left on the agenda is meeting schedule for uh, upcoming weeks. <clears throat> we still don't have a topic for June 3rd. So if anybody has any ideas let us know otherwise we'll probably jira palooza i would guess and then the following meeting is scheduled during open aperio so there will actually be no meeting or at least no teaching and learning call anybody have anything else Uh, in that case, we'll stop if nobody else has anything. I'm not hearing anybody. We'll stop the recording and say goodbye. Thanks, everybody, for joining us today. Thanks. Bye. See you on the UX call. <laughs>